I'm Erin Udaly here at Roper Mountain Science Center and today I'm going to talk to you guys all about the law of conservation of matter and um, you may have actually already heard of a law of conservation um, the law of conservation of energy and when you studied that one you learned that energy can't be created or destroyed it can just be changed from one form to another and our law of conservation of matter is super similar it's that matter cannot be created or destroyed Basically, bonds are broken and the matter is rearranged. So if you start with a certain amount of matter at the beginning of a reaction, like a chemical reaction, then after that chemical reaction, you still have the same amount of matter. So we are going to kind of explore this law a little bit today. In our first demonstration, we are going to burn a little bit of um, this stuff. This is steel wool. Um, so it is mostly made of iron and I'm going to um, well, actually, we're going we're gonna to measure the mass of this. So let's go ahead and switch views. And you guys can see, good, on our scale here, right now we have a starting mass of 2.1 grams. And so I'm about to um, light this on fire, and I want you guys, in your head, make a prediction. Do you think that this mass is going to increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, here we go. So... As we're watching this burn, I want to point out a couple of things. Um, right now, we're getting some good signs of a chemical change here. Um, I can see a color change. Um, there's an odor change from where I am. I can smell it. I know you cannot. Um, and we've got light and heat production. So we definitely know that we have a chemical change that is taking place right here with our steel wool. Um, and so we're going to keep on letting that burn and keeping an eye on our mass. Right now we're still at 2.1. And um, the color change we're getting, we're going from sort of that shiny metal color to sort of a blue color on the screen. It looks more of a like really dark gray. Um, and we're waiting for that to work its way all the way through. And then we're gonna kind of see what we end up with. Okay. I'm gonna try to get this last little piece to go. All right, so you may have noticed that we just had a little tiny bit of an increase in mass. Um, and so that's a little bit surprising. We went from 2.1 to 2.2. We didn't decrease, we didn't stay the same. We actually increased by a little tiny bit. Now you might think 0.1 grams, that's not much. Um, no, it's not much. But the thing about the law of conservation of matter is really it shouldn't have been anything, right? It should have been the exact same number. But when we burned that steel wool, we saw that our mass actually increased. So like we gotta kind of figure out what's going on there. Let's look at the equation for this chemical reaction that we just saw. Um, so I told you the steel wool was mostly made of iron, and Fe is our symbol for that. Um, and it's a reaction between iron and oxygen. And then that yields or makes iron oxide. So looking at this formula, um, I want to go ahead and point out, you can see coefficients in this formula. That's the red numbers, the bigger numbers. Um, and we're going to talk more about coefficients later. I just wanted to say that word and just point out to you, these are our coefficients. Now, back to the bigger question. Why did our mass increase over there? Um, and I think I'm gonna make that even narrower question for you. Which of these reactants do you think that we failed to measure on our scale? Did we measure the iron? Did we measure the oxygen? So, you may be thinking, we didn't measure that oxygen. You would be right. Um, this is a reactant we weren't able to um, measure because the oxygen is a gas, right? It's floating around in this room. I wasn't able to order it to sit on the scale. Um, so we weren't taking this into account. But once it reacted, um, these bonded to each other. So then we were able to measure that total mass at the end. Okay, so that's all well and good. But let's see if we can maybe try to close the system a little bit and see if we can cause that chemical change to happen without having a change in mass. So this time we are going to do the same chemical reaction. We've got steel wool in a test tube. 
and there's a balloon on the end of the test tube. And what we're going to do is take a mass before, and then I'm going to do the same chemical reaction. We're gonna set this on fire, and then we're gonna measure the mass at the end. And this time, this balloon ought to keep this oxygen constant, right? We shouldn't be able to be pulling in new oxygen from the room. It should be limited to whatever is in this tube right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto my triple beam balance. We're switching to this other scale, um, this triple beam balance, because it is a little bit more um, precise. Okay, whoops, sorry guys. Okay, I'm gonna autofocus you. If it's been a while since you've used your triple beam balance, I'm gonna kind of zoom in a little bit and remind you of how to do this. Um, on the other side of my scale, you can't see right now, I have my test tube sitting there in a beaker. And basically I arranged all of these masses to cause this white line here to be even with this line right here. And on your screen, if it looks a little bit not even, that's because of the angle of the camera. From where I'm sitting, they are lined up perfectly. So I would just add these numbers. Right now we're starting at 127.9 grams. So that is our starting mass. And so what I want you guys to do is go ahead and make a prediction of what you think our um, ending mass is going to be. Do you think it's going to increase, decrease, or remain the same? And while you're thinking about that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my goggles on because I am about to um, light up a burner so that we can get that steel wool to ignite. Um, first, I'm going to go ahead and put my test tube in this little, um, these little tongs so I can hold it without burning my fingers. And here we go. Good. All right. So keep your prediction in your head. Do you think the mass is going to go up, go down, or stay the same? And I'm going to just sort of let this go, it takes a little bit of time because it has to react through the walls of um, the test tube. And I know you cannot see it very well anymore because you don't have it right in front of the camera. But when I move it, I'm gonna move it to where you can see at the end. And then you'll be able to tell that we had that chemical change because you'll have that color change um, that will have happened. Okay, so it's looking pretty good to me. I think we basically got it all pretty much all change colors there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Good, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back. Oh, actually, let me show it to you first. Yeah, let's look at this thing. Oh, okay, sorry. There, all right, I'm gonna try auto-focusing you a little bit. And you can see we've got that darker color. I'm gonna bring the one we burned together over. And if you see this one, like that spot, that shiny, shiny spot right there at the top, that's the only part that you're looking at that did not react. This sort of blue gray color is all the stuff that did react. So you can see in our tube, we can tell that there was that chemical change in there because of that color change. So I'm gonna gently set this back where it started and we're gonna be patient and watch and see if these lines kind of line back up again for us. Because if they do, that means that we were able to show that um, you know we did not create or destroy any matter. And sure enough, they are lined up perfectly just like they were before. So once we limited our oxygen, we were able to show that we did not have any new mass coming in, new matter coming in, and we didn't lose any either. Um, as long as we kept our, kept our system sort of closed, we were able to sort of um, you know keep that number constant, which is awesome. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at one more um, equation here. So this one, we are also gonna do this, um, I'm gonna show you this, I'm going to turn water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. But before I do this one, I wanna spend a little bit of time looking at this equation. So we've got H2O, that's water, um, yielding H2, that's hydrogen gas, and oxygen gas. And I'm gonna actually, um, we're gonna look at this one a little bit more closely with some molecular models. So hold on a minute, let me fix my zoom and autofocus you guys. Okay, so that is what we call um, a molecular model. So the spheres are showing you atoms. Um, so this H2O, that two goes with the H. So these white ones are hydrogens. So we have two hydrogens. And the O does not have a subscript, so you assume it's a one. So we have one oxygen. So the red color is the oxygen. Now, let's talk for a second. I told you we would come back to coefficients, and here we are. Let's look at that coefficient there. 
the coefficient's telling us something. Do we have one water molecule? No, we've got two water molecules. So I'm gonna put another one right there. And then we've got our arrow. That means yields or makes. And then you can see that we're yielding hydrogen gas and that H2, that H2 is just two of those um, little hydrogens connected with this um, line. The lines, these little stick pieces, those are showing you the chemical bonds. So there's one hydrogen, but do we have one hydrogen? Or do we actually have two hydrogens? So this coefficient's telling me I've got two of these. And then our other product is our oxygen gas. So I'm gonna put one of those down. So that O2, that two tells me I've got two of these oxygens. There's no coefficient written there. And so I'm gonna, that, that tells me something actually. It tells me that this is a one. So if there's not a coefficient written, it's just a one. Now, now that we've got this all laid out with our models, um, we would call this a balanced chemical equation. And let's talk about why this is balanced. When we use that word balanced, we're saying you have the same number of atoms that you start with is what you end up with in your product side. So we started off with, let's do oxygens first. One, two oxygens. We ended up with one, two oxygens. All right, let's check our hydrogens. We started off with one, two, three, four. And we ended up with one, two, three, four. So you can see here that we had the same things on either side, but they just, the only thing that happened is we broke bonds and we rearranged everything. All right, so I think we're getting about ready to do this one. So let's, um, I want you guys to make a prediction. Based on what I just told you and looking at this, um, looking at this equation here, I want you to make a prediction as to which product you're gonna be able to see more of. Are you gonna see more hydrogen or are you going to see more oxygen? And while y'all kind of think through that, I'm gonna get myself organized over here. We're about to look at something different under this camera. Okay. So the way we are going to actually look at this reaction and cause it to happen, I have here a liquid. And that liquid is water. Um, and in that water, I have some Epsom salt dissolved in there. And I also have some universal indicator. And what we're going to do is we are going to use the power from this nine volt battery. Um, and we're gonna use that when we put it in the water like this, we're gonna make a current that's gonna give us enough energy to start this chemical reaction. It's gonna kind of start breaking these bonds up in our water and then creating our products. Now, I asked you which one we would have more of, and hopefully you decided that we would have more hydrogen because of this coefficient, this two, right? That should tell you that we should have twice as much hydrogen as we have oxygen. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make some observations, and the way we're gonna tell which is which is this universal indicator will change colors um, based on whether it's in an acid or a base. So our oxygen is going to turn an orange color, and our hydrogen is going to turn a blue color. Um, so basically, if you see orange, you're looking at oxygen. If you see blue, you're looking at hydrogen. The other signal we're gonna look for is the amount of bubbles you see coming off of the two pencil um, points. So we're gonna look at bubbles, we're gonna look at color change, and we're looking for more blue and more bubbles coming off of the blue, um, because that's what it seems like we should have based on our formula. Okay, let me get this light on. Okay, I'm gonna zoom, whoa, I'm gonna zoom in and maybe a little bit further. Okay, I'm gonna autofocus. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can put those in while keeping them on the camera. Okay, good. All right, so you should be able to see a bunch of bubbles coming off um, of the hydrogen side. You can see sort of that blue color forming around that and you can see all of that like, yeah, all those bubbles are making sort of sparkly colors because the way they're reflecting the light. So that seems to be working great. We're getting lots and lots of bubbles around hydrogen, not so much around oxygen. I'm gonna try to gently move these so you guys can see our color change. Good, it's sort of dark on the screen. I'm gonna attempt to make it more bright. Nope. There, that's better. Okay, so you can see that um, we did have a lot more blue than orange. So that's awesome. We were able to basically see, um, see that we were getting twice as much of that hydrogen product as we were 
the oxygen product. And the reason for that is because we were making twice as much hydrogen as we were oxygen. And the reason for that goes back to the law of conservation of mass. Um, one more time, um, let's kind of review this equation, what we just saw. Um, we had water, right? And if we had, let's say we started with our two waters, um, and then that current from that nine volt battery broke the bonds, broke these chemical bonds up, and these hydrogens from one of my waters made one of our products. These hydrogens from this other one made our other product of hydrogen, our two coefficient here. So those four atoms came from there. And then left over, we had these two um, oxygen, which bonded to each other, and that was our other product. So you can see here that like when we have a balanced equation, that's kind of reflecting what actually happens in real life. So um, these coefficients kind of allow us to say like, well, we must have had twice as much water to start with. We must have had twice as much of that hydrogen being produced. Um, so that's why we do that balancing, um, because it's reflecting what's actually happening in real life. Um, we're not creating uh, atoms, we're not destroying atoms, we're just breaking bonds, rearranging everybody, and uh, connecting them in different ways when we have a chemical change. All right, guys, so um, I may or may not have said this, do not light steel wool on fire at your own house. Um, we had to treat ours um, to make it safe to burn and remove any impurities, um, and in general, we don't want you to set fires at your house. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today to learn about the law of conservation of matter. We cannot wait to see you in real life here um, at Roper Mountain. We'll see you again soon. Bye.